All right, I'm gonna flesh out my thoughts in this video. Stick with me here. I'm gonna bounce back and forth between live examples and this presentation, so it won't be completely boring. But this is an idea, theory I've been working on. It's how we should use these new custom GPTs, the new feature that ChatGPT is allowing its users to create. And I think there's a special use case for them. It's how I've been approaching them. And it's made my productivity within ChatGPT so much better, way more efficient. If you haven't been involved lately with ChatGPT, I'll give you a quick overview of what I'm talking about. So specifically for ChatGPT Plus users, GPT-4 has been upgraded to GPT-4 Turbo. We still have a limit on the messages, but it's a lot faster. And if you're a developer, it's a lot cheaper for the API calls too. But in this update, they release something called custom GPTs. Now, if you look on the left here, these are a bunch of them that I have made, and I've made some videos about each of these. We got SEO Fox helps create SEO articles, video metadata AI. So for those with a YouTube channel, you upload your video transcript and it creates all of the titles, description, tags, hashtags, everything you need for your upload. And I got like two thumbnail makers which creates thumbnails for your YouTube videos, but I'm gonna hit explore here. And soon there'll be a marketplace where you can use other users' GPTs that they have made public. But for now, you just have the ones made by OpenAI. I went through these in another video. Not the best, nothing really stands out here. I'd say just pass on all of these. But you have the option to create your own. So I'm gonna click this quickly. Brings you to a GPT builder, and then on the configure tab, you can create an image for this GPT with Dolly 3 name it, add a description so people know what it does, and then you make custom instructions. So if I go back, I'm surprised that custom instructions are still a thing because to me, this feature is now obsolete because I can create my own GPT with its own custom instructions. And that brings me to my first point, and that is no more custom instructions. Why do you need custom instructions when you can create a whole new GPT with those instructions? I don't know about you, but before, I'd create a custom instruction, let's enable this. I'd say something like, you are best-selling author Mark Manson, respond in his tone using his entire backlog of books and articles as information for my relationship problems. And I created a relationship coach and I'd use this custom instruction. So I wouldn't have to keep writing this before my conversation started. I would save this, start a brand new conversation with GPT-4 and I would talk about my relationship problems. But whenever I wanted to change it up, let's go back to my custom instructions, I'd have to disable and then use GPT-4 normally. Or if I wanted to change this up, I'd have to copy this and then save this in a separate document so I could copy and paste it in whenever I needed it. But with custom GPTs, this is no more. I can go to explore, create a custom GPT, and in the instructions, paste this prompt in, name it something like Mark Manson GPT, and now whenever I wanna use this GPT, it's in my catalog of custom GPTs. So in my opinion, it makes custom instructions obsolete. Your custom instructions, let's click into this, are now in the configure tab of your individual GPTs. And now there's no more collecting the best prompts. Like I mentioned, you don't need a separate document anymore to hold all of your prompts that you wanna use with ChatGPT. You now make them a custom GPT. Like before I'd be searching on Reddit, I'd be finding the best chat GPT prompts, right? Let's scroll down, let's find one. And this is one about if you wanna make it your teacher, if you wanna learn a new topic, you know, you are an elite blank, let's say chef, and I'm your student whom you must pass on your knowledge and expertise. You know, if I really like this prompt, let's say I tried it out in chat GPT, I like the responses, I'd have to copy it, and again, paste into a document, label it, something like teacher, student, and then go back and forth when I wanna use this prompt compared to other prompts. But now, as mentioned earlier, I'd take this and I'd create a brand new GPT with this prompt, but I'd make it more like ask the topic first, and then you are an elite answer to the topic question. You know, just prepare the GPT for other use cases. And then student, teacher, GPT. It's all set and ready to go if I wanna use it in the future. It saves you time. There's no more pasting instructions back and forth. Very easy to see how quickly you can complete the tasks you need to complete in ChatGPT if you just use custom GPTs properly. Here I'm back in ChatGPT. 
Let's say I was uploading a new video to my YouTube channel. Watch how quick this is. I'll go to video metadata AI. You know, it says start by pasting in your video transcript. I don't have to write any prompts, just paste in my transcript. Let's scroll down. Let's watch it do its thing. It's going to summarize the transcript. Give me hashtags. Give me a title. Generate video tags. Okay, now I need a thumbnail. I don't have to say anything. Let's copy the title that it gave me. I'm going to go to thumbnail maker. Paste in the title. Look how fast this is. I'm switching custom GPTs. I'm going back and forth. I'm doing all of my tasks. I'm just clicking the custom GPT that's needed for this specific task. And then boom, thumbnail for a YouTube video. All of this done in under 30 seconds. That's crazy. No more thinking about the prompt or writing the prompt before each message. I got it all ready to go with custom GPTs. There's no more task switching. We're not jumping back and forth between different things where the GPT in our conversation is getting confused. Oh, I thought we were doing this earlier in the conversation. Now we're doing that. No more task switching. Each custom GPT has its own task. All right, for GPT-4, if you're doing a basic conversation, it'd be like, all right, first I want you to draw me an image. So draw me an image of a man smiling. So I'd have to say, draw me an image, all right? Got me the image. But now if I wrote something else, it would still be stuck on Dolly 3. It'd think it need an image. I'd have to say specifically, okay, now, write me an article about this image. I'd have to tell it that we're now on to a different task. Now we're on to writing the task. But with custom GPTs, there's no task switching. Each custom GPT has its own task. And like I did before, video metadata AI, it has one task. It's creating metadata for my videos, thumbnail maker, making thumbnails, daily fitness coach, giving me my workout plan. Daily Fitness Coach knows not to draw me an image when I ask it a question, but Thumbnail Maker will only draw images. This is quicker, clearer, and more organized. And that's why I believe that each agent should do its own thing. If you want good outputs, you need good inputs. And there's no better input than a custom GPT with custom instructions that says exactly what you want it to do. So we should be creating mini agents using what I like to call steps. And let me show you how that looks. With each of these GPTs, they're working on a logical path. All right, I'm not giving them a wide range prompt and asking them to make a decision, I'm telling them exactly what I want. And we do that with steps. So let me show you video metadata AI. I'm gonna go up here, let's click edit. And in the configure tab, you'll see how this prompt is laid out. Let's make this bigger. I found that custom GPTs work best when you give it step-by-step -step instructions. So I first, I tell it that the instructions are outlined below and each step has three parts. I tell it what the input's gonna be, your task, and then any special notes about the task. And I found that the GPT is more consistent in its output when you organize the prompt like this, step one, step two, step three. It will follow in a logical manner. It will always do step one before step two and step two before step three. So you can walk it down a logical path of what you need it to do. And in this video metadata AI, it summarizes the transcript, then gives you a video title, then generates the video tags one by one by one. Let's go back, cause I'll show you how it creates it if you just do it as they want you to. They ask you, what would you like to make? Let's say a cooking GPT that gives you recipes based on your ingredients. Let's hit that in. And I'll show you how it configures the prompt if you use the natural language builder. Let's agree on the name. And if I go to configure, let's open up these instructions. It's just one long paragraph. But I always find it works better when you use steps. I'd write step one, ask the user for their ingredients that they have at their home. Don't move on to the next step until you get their ingredients. Step two, offer some meal suggestions and ask to choose one. And then step three, write the recipe for that meal suggestion. So now each time someone uses this custom GPT, it's gonna follow this logical step one, step two, step three, and you'll have consistent outputs. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with one more tip. That's the end of my presentation. It's how I use custom GPTs and how I'm gonna use them in the future. But I always found that I don't quite like how long my prompts are. I like clear and more concise. And a way I found to do this is to copy what you want the prompt to be. We're gonna to go to basic chat GPT and we're gonna type this. I made a custom AI that is a cooking companion that gives you recipes. I'm gonna paste in the full prompt below and I want you to clean it up for me so that it's clearer, more succinct and better for the AI to understand. And then I add at the end here and maybe add important steps to the process that I forgot. And then paste that prompt in, surround it with quotes 
and ChatGPT is gonna clean up your prompt for you and give you some additional steps to consider to make your custom GPT even better. So I like this dietary preferences and restrictions. I think that'd be a good step. Before it gives you meal suggestions, it asks you if you have any dietary restrictions. Are you vegan, vegetarian? Do you have any allergies? Are you lactose intolerant, whatever? And that's a step that I wouldn't have thought of. So what I do is I take this, let's copy this. We're gonna go back to my chef's companion GPT. Let's paste this in, but we'll do something like this this time. Step one, remember we're adding a step. Let's go see exactly what it said. Copy this, paste that in. Let's go step three and step four. We'll remove these conversation starters. If I go, I have beans, tomato sauce, and ground beef. It's gonna first ask me what my dietary preferences are. Perfect, no dietary restrictions and it should give me meal suggestions because that's step three. And let's say we choose four. I like number four. It should move to step four, which is recipe generation. And look at that, it's starting with the ingredients and it should tell me exactly how to prepare it. So let's all use custom GPTs to make our lives more productive.